0.5, and then I'm going to add 75. And what we've just done, guys, is we came up with an equation that models what's going on there. Yeah. And you might be like, Solberg, that was a lot, and you're right. These take, this is kind of level four stuff. But if you're, if you're able to kind of take a step back and say, okay, well, the radius was 60, that means it goes up 60, down 60, that's my new amplitude. The period is 30, so if I do 2 pi over b equals 30, and then I solve it, I get b is pi over 15. The midline is going to be halfway between 15 and 135, which is 75, just find the average. And then when I graphed it, I just went over 7.5 units, that's where we reached the midline. Now, let me show you just one other thing that actually you might like better. Someone might look at this and say, I don't want to use sine, I want to use cosine. Could you use cosine to model this? Yes. Yes, and it actually might be easier because where does cosine start? When I graph cosine, it starts at the top. the top. Is this one at the top? Yes. No. Where is it? At it's at the bottom. So it's like a cosine, except it's flipped. How do we flip a cosine? Negative. It's a negative cosine. Remember how a negative, we talked about that last time, the negative will flip this. So guys, if I wanted to, I could say, I'm going to make this a cosine that's flipped over. And it's going to have some similarities, but it's going to also be a little easier. So the negative is going to flip it. And then that way, I don't have to do a vertical shift. I don't have to do a phase, or sorry, a horizontal shift, a phase shift. I just need to do this. So now instead of shifting it right seven and a half and calling it sine, I'm just going to flip it over and call it a cosine. Now, this is your first example, so if you're still a little like, uh, I don't get this one, that's okay. But let me show you something cool. We're going to go to Desmos. Desmos. And I'm going to graph this and show you that it works, okay? And you guys, for your homework and for a project we're about to do, Desmos. you're going to use Desmos too to check your work. Watch this. I'm going to go. 60 sine of pi over 15. Oh, I need to do that a little different. And then x minus 7.5 plus 75. I'm going to have to zoom out here go? a bit. But let's see, does this model what's going on here? Is the maximum height 135? Yes. Let's look at that point. Yeah, maximum height is 135. Is minimum height 15? Yeah, so someone gets on at time zero, and they're 15 meters off the ground. And then they go up, and they get to the top 15 minutes later, and then they come down, and they're done a half hour later. Mm -hmm. So this is graphing what's going on there. Pretty cool, right? So if we go back up, it would be 45. This should be 45, yep, and then done it an hour. Now, let's check. Does a cosine one work? We said that was negative 60 cosine. And again, we had pi over 15, but we didn't need to shift it over. We just needed to add 75. Does it make the same graph? Yes. So you can model with sine or cosine. The cosine is actually a little bit easier to think about because you don't have to shift it left or right. You just flip it over. So do they, do they not stop the, the ever? No, and let me show you how that works. Does it actually line works. up with the hours? Like, mm -hmm. Okay, because I would be annoyed if they had it like, oh, the next one starts at this random minute. Okay. Well, so that's a good question. I'm actually going to talk about that a little bit more, but we're going to do a little trivia game here. No use in Siri, but I want you guys to guess where is the world's tallest Ferris wheel? Yes, World's tallest Ferris wheel. Let's get some guesses going here. What do you think, Isaac? Somewhere in Asia. Somewhere in Asia, it is not. That's a whole not. continent, and you still mad? <laughs> Isn't it? There, there is a, there's one on your homework that used to be the tallest, but it's not yes, anymore. What did you say, course. Caroline? London. London, the one we just did, used to be the highest. Is it in Australia? It is in Las Vegas. What? Antonio got it. The world's tallest Ferris wheel is called the High Roller, and it is in Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas right now. I didn't go on it, but I see it. Have you guys been to Vegas? I've been to Vegas 
Have I've you been, seen this Ferris wheel? Yes. Every time we go to Vegas, I'm not allowed out of my car. My mom doesn't want me out of the car. We always like drive through Vegas and we're going to California, and she's and like, like, "I'll go get food." Lock the doors. You stay lock in the doors. We park by the fountain. Since like, you watch that fountain. Question, has you seen the Coca-Cola factory when I'm back? Yeah. There's All right, now. Let's calm down. Let me just talk about this for a second. So me and my family, we went through Vegas, and I'm like, I have to go on this so I can show my students that I've been on the world's tallest roller to Ferris wheel. And you guys. You need to say roller coaster. Yeah, it was. <laughs> point at someone when they make a mistake and say, ha, ha, ha. I'll do it to you on your test. You won't like it. Okay. <laughs> Let me actually walk you through this. Mindy was asking, so does it not stop? And the question is, yeah, it, it actually is continuous. Yeah, what, it has there. doors on both sides. So when you're done, it opens and says, hey, get out, and you get on, but it's still moving, it's still continuously moving. Oh, but don't worry, they have nets underneath in case you miss Okay, I'm like, what if I fall? They've got nets. I don't think anyone's ever fallen into it, though. Yeah. So this is actually what it looks like, the view from the top. Um, let me, I think I can scroll down. Is it a closed capsule? Yes, it's a closed there? capsule. Oh, I can't fall. So out. if you know Vegas, this is actually the uh, Bellagio yeah, Mountains. Yeah, that's what I thought. And that's then the only you've got some other cool see. stuff there. Caesar the only palace thing I'm allowed to go to in Vegas. Not, that's the Caesar Palace over there. Okay. I yeah. Believe. Now, what we're going to do, I forgot to print this for your notes because I was keep getting rid of the pictures, and so I accidentally deleted this one. We're going to do the same thing we just did, but for this Ferris wheel. All right? All right, so let's go. And Louise, will you read this one nice and loud? It looks so unstable. Uh, <laughs> This Ferris wheel is the world's tallest with a maximum height of 550 feet. The wheel completes a rotation every 30 minutes. The diameter of the high roller is 520 feet. We have two revolutions of the lowest gondola and right in the equation of the trick economic uh, function that models the height versus time of the gondola. All right, so what I want you guys to do, there's some similarities here, there's some differences. So there's 30 feet between the diameter and the gondola? Yes. That's how, that's like the gondola is 30 feet off of the circle. Not necessarily, well, but also it's the loading platform part. Like oh, okay. It's going to be all be off the ground. Like, if you look at this picture here, that's from the ground level. Let me move this over here. So the gondola is it scra the bottom wheel isn't scraping the ground. There's still some more space there. Okay, what I want you guys to do, I know it's not on your notes, but underneath I want you to draw this XY axis. And some of this is going to be the same as one we just did. What was something that's the same for this one that was the same for the Len and I? Thirty minutes. The time. So your X axis will be the same, right? It'll be done at thirty, and if I'm doing it twice, done at sixty, which you are doing it twice. How much does it cost? Uh, depends if you go. Well, we went in the day, so it's cheaper. Oh, if you go at night, then. go at night. It's a little bit more expensive because then that's when it's coolest. You get to see the yeah, lights. Yeah, it's all lit up. Uh, my sister also used to live there, so we got like a discount, like a locals discount. So oh. that was cool. All right, but what I want you guys to do is try to figure out based on what they told us with the heights, uh, where the maximum height is based on the diameter, where the minimum height is, and where the uh, midline is. And try to come up with the graph, like what we just did for the London Eye. Try to come up with that for this one. 